so um, why don't we get started? It is, uh, I know it's Monday, it's June 15th, 6.32 p.m. I'll call the Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Uh, a couple of little announcements. This meeting is being uh, recorded. Um, it is being recorded by both by us and by the um, uh, by Gail Hunter, Hunter for accuracy in minutes. Uh, anybody else is asked to, is, who is recording the meeting is asked to notify the chair in the chat. Um, and uh, I'm I'm doing things a, a little hair differently with respect to managing the. Um, um, people wanting to speak tonight. So <clears throat> ordinarily I put the meeting into lecture mode and everybody else is muted and then periodically we go into question and answer mode. The uh, difficulty with that, the technical difficulty with that is it ends up muting everybody and then I have to unmute people selectively again and it, uh, we all wait around with awkward pauses while um, we successfully and unsuccessfully mute people and unmute people. So what I did this time is I put it into lecture mode and I also put it into question and answer mode right up front. And I'm not going to take it out of question and answer mode, which means people can queue up um, uh, for if, if they need to make public comment or they want to make public comment. And I will let people know when, if and when I'm taking public comment on particular uh, questions. I'm not going to pay attention to the Q&A queue at all times, but I will periodically look at it. In the chat window I will um, <coughs> Uh, probably see on a regular basis. Uh, all right, so that said, uh, why don't we get started with the actual um, agenda items. Um, I am going to ask if anybody has any uh, public comment that they, short public comment they want to make on any items that are not on the agenda. If they are, then step into the question and answer queue now. Those of you who are using phones can press star six. Uh, so this is uh, only if you have any comment that you need to make or want to make on something that is not on tonight's, gen tonight's agenda. So I'll wait for maybe, you know, 15 seconds here while people sort that out and, and we'll get going. Who has a baby? Oh, I'm mute. That's my granddaughter. Oh! <laughs> oh All right. Um, let's get going then. Uh, item number one on the agenda is uh, annual town meeting uh, update, local elections update. Um, so we're going to start this out with um, our uh, update from Alan Wilson and then we need to go through the um, warrant articles and discuss uh, which ones are actually going to have speakers um, from the board and who from the board should be expected to speak. It gives us a little bit of time to write our comments and um, uh, give feedback to Alan. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Wilson, if you don't mind. Yes. Thank you very much. So, um, I hope everyone has, has received or seen online the uh, public health protocol that I've drafted for the meeting with enormous help from Deb Bradley. I can't say enough about how generous she has been with her time and expertise. And, uh, as I said the other night to the Board of Health, uh, all the mistakes in that document are mine. All the good points are Deb's. So, <laughs> but I, I, think we, I think we have come up with a very good uh, protocol for conducting the town meeting safely. Uh, after Deb and I put this together, somewhat belatedly, the Department of Public Health, the State Department of Public Health, came out with their guidance for the conduct of town meeting. Essentially, it consists of saying two things. First of all, it's a good idea to conduct the meeting outside, if you can. Second, if you're not going to conduct the meeting outside, here are what we think you should do to be safe. So we're obviously conducting our meeting outside, and we are also doing virtually all of the things that they recommend for meetings conducted indoors. So I think we've covered our bases. I think it will be a safe meeting. I think people can attend with confidence. Uh, and the Board of Health at its meeting on uh, Thursday evening voted to endorse the protocol that Deb and I had come up with. So um, I think I think people can come feeling pretty safe. Uh, there are always risks in this day and age with COVID around. 
uh, I think we have reduced them to a bare minimum. And that I feel really good about that. Um, I'm, trying to do, I'm doing all I can to shorten the meeting. Um, I'm using for the first time what our bylaw provides for a consent calendar to consolidate several non what I think are non-controversial articles and we'll take those up and hopefully vote on them without debate. Uh, there are five of those. I think it's one, two, nine, ten, and eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I'm just hoping it, our bylaw requires a unanimous vote. So I hope there is not going to be a, a long dissenter on that. Uh, as I said, I, I'm hoping to keep this meeting to the shortest time possible. So I think the next item that, that Eli wants to talk about is speakers on articles, where we need them, where we don't. But I'm also going to encourage anyone who is speaking, uh, including Eli and Maury, for their introductory comments at the beginning of the meeting, and also on or articles 4 and 5, to really keep them short. So, if, if you have questions, I think I, I hope you've all seen the uh, protocol. If you have questions about that, I'd be welcome to try to. I would welcome the opportunity to answer them. Uh, otherwise, we, I think we can go just to the next uh, item, which is speakers on articles. So, Alan, oops. So, Alan, I did actually have one question on the consent agenda. So, you said yes. a unanimous vote, right? Um, so, if there's a not a unanimous vote on that, what's the actual process at that point? Do you then inquire uh, if there is a particular item that people uh, wanted to take out of that, or well, there's, there's an op the, 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 there is an opportunity before we vote on the consent agenda for anyone to put a hold on any article within it. So, we, we would take any holes out, and then we would vote on the non-holes that are left. And, and unless somebody presses the wrong button, um, we ought to have our unanimous vote on whatever is left in. I, I okay. personally don't see anything that I've put on the consent agenda that anybody would want to discuss. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put it there. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, well then let's move on to the um, articles that uh, uh, we need to have speakers on. And uh, um, so for, from the Board of Selectmen anyway, then those would be uh, at least <coughs> three and four and five, six, um, and uh, I believe 14. Is that correct? That's what I have on my list. Okay. So what we what we need to do there is decide who's going to be speaking on which of these articles. <coughs> um, so why don't we go through them in order? Um, so on three. Uh, Actually, did you want uh, Jeff Delaney to speak on that, or one of us to speak on that? I think it could, it could be either way. I, 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 you know, I don't know what the number is for that yet, but I don't think it's controversial. It might, it might be preferable for one of the selectmen to speak, just so that it's, it's coming from a, uh, a neutral source. Okay. Uh, all right. Anybody have a preference? Um, wanted to speak on the uh, North Shore Technical District um, allocation? I can do it. So that's Muffin? No. Yeah. Alan, I would presume Jeff is available to answer any questions. Yes. Uh, well, I, I assume that's the case. I, I haven't confirmed that he's going to be there, but I assume he is. Okay. All right. Uh, Article four. 
pay town debts and charges for the ensuing 12 months. You want to speak around that one, right? Yes. Uh, who wants to be it? Uh, I'm happy to. Becky. Becky has volunteered. Article 5. Um, uh, that's the capital budget. And uh, mm, Alan, do you want uh, one of us to speak on this, or do you want Greg to open on this um, and address any either? Uh, does the board feel strongly? I was thinking that maybe Greg could address it because if we get any questions that come in in between now and then, I think there may well be some um, technical questions as to uh, the particular items, particular line items. He could address those as part of the opening comments. Agreed. Greg? Just unmute himself. Sorry about that. Yes, that's, okay. that's, that's fine. I, I'm happy to do that. Okay, let's do that. I think that might make things just a little bit more efficient. How's your grandchild doing? No quieter. <laughs> she, she, she loves her singing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, Article 6 is the uh, um, capital improvements, the $725,000 for the capital improvements. And this is a capital expenditure exclusion. Uh, who wants to talk about water pipes? <laughs> I, I think that actually would be a good one for Greg also. Hmm. All right. I will not debate the wisdom of that. You're pretty uh, sure. Yeah. Article 7 is the school district. Uh, do you want us to speak on Article 7? No, I don't think so. All right. Um, okay, and that moves us on to, well, Article 8 is going to be presented by the CPA. And that takes us to Article 14. Um, uh, unless anybody objects, I wouldn't mind speaking on that one. That's you. Right. Which, which one is that? Uh, that is the um, Christian Hill. Christian Hill lot. Okay. Would you like to speak on it? I I can hand it to you if you'd like. No, I'm. All righty. I'm good. I'm happy to do it. So that's all the speakers on all the articles, unless I missed something, Alan. Nope, I think you got them all. Okay. So so uh, Alan, will you be? I'm sorry. Um, Alan, will you be moving to pass over the, the two articles, or how do you want to handle that? Uh, I won't move it, but I, uh, but I will state that someone from the Board of Selectmen moves it. Right, I'm sorry, yeah, that's it. Yes, okay. Yeah, and that, that would be, uh, I think it's 12 and 13, right? Right. Um, uh, so I, 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 I would just want to emphasize to everybody that I want to keep the meeting as brief as possible, obviously, so we can be home before dark, before the mosquitoes come out. So I'm going to encourage everyone to keep their remarks brief. I want to hear from everybody who is making a statement how long they feel they need to speak, both with respect to individual articles and Eli, for you, with respect to your opening comments. Um, and I'm going to ask the same of Maury and of Shannon Urban for the school. And I really want to, I really want to keep this as short as possible. Um, second thing we have to think about is weather. The last time I looked, which was this morning, the forecast for the last several days had stayed the same, which is isolated thunderstorms for Monday afternoon ending about 5 o'clock, but who knows? <laughs> so I think we, we, we need to establish a 
procedure for how we're going to assess the weather and decide whether to postpone to the 24th. As of now, there is no hint of thunderstorms on the 24th, so that may be a good backup date. Um, but I'm, I'm going to suggest that Eli, um, Greg, and I, and Bayon, our weather guru, um, convene periodically, probably starting Saturday morning, maybe earlier, and fairly frequently through the weekend to assess whether we can stick with our uh, Monday evening plan or whether we need to defer to Wednesday. And I'll, and I'll, I'll send an email around to everybody that I just mentioned uh, with a proposed schedule. I think we need to be on top of that because it, it's, right now it could be problematic. Uh, yep, that sounds good. And then we have the pre-meeting on s Saturday, is that correct? Yes. Uh, nine nine o'clock on the usual same time, same channel. Yep. Uh, and obviously we'll be able to update there as well. Right. Um, sounds like a plan to me. Comments from board members? How will we, how will we notify town residents? Every way possible. Reverse 911 alert on the website and everything we can think of. Yeah. And when would that happen, Alan? Do you think, Amy, that you would call it on Sunday evening? Well, it, dep it depends, I think, on what the forecast is. If we if we get a a stable reliable forecast Saturday morning, you know, for uh, 72 hours later, it, we, 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 can, we can probably make the call then. If, the, if it looks unsettled, then we probably won't be able to make the call until Sunday night or Saturday morning, I mean, Monday morning. <laughs> but, you know, we have to balance the reliability of the forecast against giving people as much notice as possible. And what if just on the off chance both days don't cooperate? Well, then we'd have to adjourn to another date. I think we would have to give people at least a week's notice that it had changed that substantially uh, and, and try for, you know, well, we, we could try for the 29th, <laughs> which would get us in under the wire of the fiscal year. Uh, I, I think I think unfortunately we we can't predict everything. No. Right you know, this is this is the life of COVID nineteen. It's uncertainty. All mm -hmm. around. Decision to postpone to the twenty ninth would need to be made um, um, a Monday, no uh, no later than Monday. So we would have to make that based on projections of what the weather was going to be like on the twenty. Well, we we could we could postpone to the twenty fourth. Right. On Monday, I mean, we're into we're into day-to-day -day adjournments at that point. So yeah. Monday night, if we're not going to hold it Monday night, then a small group of us have to assemble at the football field in the thunderstorm and adjourn. And we can pick at that time what the adjourned date is. <clears throat> okay. All right. Could be, well, could be Wednesday, could be mon the following Monday. Depends on what what we ha what the forecast is that we have at that time. <coughs> All right. Uh, well, do we have any other questions or comments on this uh, uh, particular topic? I do not. Alan, are you all set? I think I am. I, I will email around a proposed um, schedule of uh, meeting times for the weather committee um, to suggest that we get together and see where we are. St starting maybe uh, either, either Friday afternoon or Saturday morning.
Okay, well, uh, unless anybody else has any ta anything else on uh, annual town meeting, I'd like to move on to uh, item number two on the agenda. Okay. Thank you, Alan. You're very welcome. I'm going to sign off now, Mr. Chairman. Um, Bye -bye. Thank you, Alan. You have an excellent evening, sir. You too. Thank you. All right, item number two is outdoor dining applications. So we have uh, two of these that uh, went through the process and that we need to um, ratify. One was for Bravo and one for, was for Calas. Um, Greg, any updates on those? Uh, Greg is muted. Or there, there we go. Sorry, oh, a little good. delayed. <laughs> uh, no, no updates. Um, I think they're, they would like to proceed. Um, everything seems to be in order uh, for for Calas with the two parking areas. Um, uh, DPW can put the, the Jersey barriers up in the next couple of days. They were hoping to open up on Thursday. Oh, good. All right. Any questions or comments from the board? No, I, Eli. I would only just like to reiterate my concern around. Uh, having a police officer in the downtown vicinity more often than not. Uh, however, that can be arranged and managed. Yeah, so we have, um, Tom and I have spoken about making sure that the um, duty officers are making a regular presence uh, along, along Beach Street there. Thank you. Anybody else? When the duty officers are walking, um, or the 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 parking um, officers are out there, are they usually together or separate? They're separate. Okay. And I the, ask the, simply because when I've I've been downtown, um, I happen to have noticed them together. So I just didn't. I was just curious <coughs> about that. Yeah, no. Usually they usually they're they're separate. Okay. Um, the, the parking offices are during the day. They stop at six, um, and they're usually walking. Okay. Any other board members or questions or comments? No, I'm just really excited to see that at least two of the restaurants are able to to utilize the process that we've put together and. Open up. All right. Agreed. Uh, Greg, I did. I was just wondering: are, is there anyone else? Any other applications in the pipeline from any of the other restaurants? Uh, yes, um, both um, uh, Alley's Beach Street Cafe um, has submitted an application. Where we've been exchanging uh, emails and just uh, following up on a few things. Um, the morning had an initial application. We haven't heard back from them with the final application, um, but I'm assuming that they want to move forward with that, but we just haven't heard back from them of late. Okay. Um, Antique Table did express interest, but we have not heard anything from them. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody from the public has any uh, comments that they want to make on this, you can step into the Q&A queue, and, or if you're on the phone only, you can press star six. Um, <clears throat> but barring that, uh, I'll ask them uh, for a, um, a motion from the board to ratify the um, uh, applications for sidewalk dining from Calas and Bravo. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor, roll call vote. Ms. Driscoll? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mr. Bodmer Turner? Yes. Ms. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes as well. All right. Making progress. Uh, <laughs> item number three on the agenda, annual appointments review and approval. All right, so in uh, your packets, we have two things. We have a list of uh, um, 
open um, positions on boards that are unfilled. And uh, we need to start um, uh, beating the bushes for people to fill those positions. I'm not going to go through all of them in this meeting tonight. Um, uh, if board members have any comments about uh, those positions or uh, advertising for those positions, um, please feel free to speak up. Well, we um, should get the listing in the cricket as soon as we can mm -hmm. on the website. Yes, we plan on doing that this week. Yeah. When those are posted, um, Greg, do, do they typically come with a, a brief description? Um, we certainly can. Um, I'm, I'm just, what if, has that been done in the past, or is it typically just the, the vacancy? Yeah, typically we've listed the vacancies. If, you know, if people have questions, you know, be in contact, and we'll provide more information. So we could we could put a little one liner for for each of the boards. We have about uh, we have about 20 positions that are you know, yeah. are vacant at this point. So we um, we definitely need folks to step forward and and uh, participate. Okay. Well, if, I'm just trying to think of what might kind of make it a little easier for people sure. to step up. Yeah. Absolutely. Do we still have a, a mother's club in town? Do you know? Uh, I'm just I don't, I, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. We do have the welcome committee. Yeah, that's. I was wondering if the welcome committee, we might be able to pull from any other organizations for some of these. Yeah, I didn't think the Mother's Club was an actual committee. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm just wondering if they might. Yeah, I could know that. Well, just the All right. Uh, so, any other uh, comments before we start going through the uh, appointments that we need to make tonight? Does anybody have any um, questions? Uh, so, so let me explain the process that I was planning on going through for the appointments. Um, uh, we have a list of uh, in our packets um, uh, the the people who wanted to be reappointed uh, to their their expiring positions were um, highlighted in red. And it's my intent to go through those uh, one by one and just uh, rattle off the um, motions and get votes on them uh, as quickly as we can. Uh oh, there goes Muffin. Muffin, you still No, there? no, I'm here. Oh, I'm good. I took myself off the computer. I'm here. That's fine. All right. Um, no so, uh, everybody on the board good with that process? Uh, yeah. Yes. And are we ready to get uh, going into that list? All right, and we'll start with the ADA committee. Lori Whirl uh, has an expiring three-year term, uh, so I'd like a motion to approve a three-year term expiring in 2023 for Lori Whirl. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I'll take a voice vote. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Yes, Muffin. Do we need to do them one by one, or can we take them, uh, uh, you know, just group them together, all those that have expiring terms and have indicated their interest in being reappointed? Or do they have to be individual? They do not have to be individual. Do board members have a preference? I'm comfortable voting on them all on math. I've read through them, so... All right, so let me see if I can phrase this appropriately. <laughs> I'll take a motion to approve uh, the existing committee members who wish to re-up their terms as highlighted to us in our meeting packet. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? 
I do have one uh, question actually that I forgot to ask earlier. Um, Greg, uh, Tom Kehoe, Assistant uh, Director for Emergency Management. Uh, he has an asterisk next to his name. Will serve until uh, uh, somebody else is appointed to fill the position. Uh, what's the anticipation there? So the anticipation is that uh, the fire chief, new fire chief, will will fill yeah. that role. That is what I thought. All right, uh, that was the only comment I had, uh, really. So, uh, given that, I will take a roll call vote. Ms. Driscoll? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mr. Bob Maternan? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Jakes? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Bowling votes yes as well. All right, that brings us to, oh my God, we caught up with two minutes early. Um, <laughs> that's sort of frustrating. Uh, I'll take the consent agenda, item number seven. Um, on the consent agenda, there were board of selectmen minutes from June 1st. Well, let me ask you this before I go. Are there gonna be any questions on any items in the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Gail, you got the minute changes, correct? I have all the minute changes and they are all input. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, I had a question on the consent agenda on the uh, on the Manchester Yacht Club. Um, in the packet that I received, there was uh, some documentation of changes in their officers, which, you know, I'm, that's all well and good, but uh, it seemed to have um, some of the pages of uh, an application for licensing as well for Never mind. Never mind. The, the, the pages follow very similar to some of the stuff that was put together in the restaurant packet. Ah, okay. <clears throat> All right, and then the um, uh, fund transfer requests. Everybody is clear on those? Yep. All right. Yes. Uh, unless there's any other uh, comments or questions, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, roll call vote. Ms. Driscoll? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mr. Bob Turner. Yes. Ms. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. All right, now it's past 7.05. And now we will move to item number four, which is the 40R zoning overlay and discussion and next steps. So um, the 40R zoning overlay discussion is something the planning board is um, working on right now. Uh, they had an initial approval some time ago to uh, open uh, public uh, input on it and uh, uh, they're holding a series of meetings on it. We hadn't met with, or rather we had a developer come before us last uh, fall and uh, uh, present to us a, um, a, a plan regarding the area up by the MAC. And uh, that was going to be the subject of the, the 40R um, uh, <coughs> To overlay discussion and um, uh, as the planning board ramps up in this we uh, want the board of selectmen to be uh, involved in that and conveying information and getting information back and forth from the planning board to the board of selectmen and I anticipate that other boards uh, will be uh, getting increasingly interested and in, uh, involved in the process as well. The, you know, for example, the Conservation Commission and the and the FinCom. Uh, what we're trying to do tonight is um, just to uh, get an update on the um, 40R 
uh, overlay discussion, either from Greg or, or Sue Brown, and also to take a, ask for a Board of Selectmen member to uh, um, uh, sp spend time focusing on the, the 40R meetings and um, uh, be sort of the point for the Board of Selectmen in making sure that we have good communications going back and forth between the planning board um, and uh, keeping the board of selectmen up to date when not all members get to those meetings. Uh, <coughs> Greg, did you want to put any comments in here? Did you want Sue Brown to put any comments in here? Sure, I can just give a little bit of background and um, explain a few things that people aren't familiar with the, with the nomenclature. Um, so 40, 40 R refers to a section of state statute um, that allows communities to um, pursue some smart growth development strategies. Um, that's their term that they have on, uh, under the law. Um, and the town receives various financial incentives um, from the state for, for housing that would um, be generated in such an overlay district. Um, and so the, um, the planning board uh, has been discussing this for a while now. They voted last fall to pursue uh, a study of the 40R district, overlay district concept in our, in our limited commercial district, the area that's on the north side of 128. Um, and it fits in well with um, a couple of the uh, critical goals of the master plan that is pursuing um, more flexible development in the LCD and also that um, the, uh, the, the desire for more diverse housing. So it really um, checks off those two major boxes uh, that are being advocated through the master plan. Um, so ultimately, voters will be the deciders on this. It uh, would represent a, a proposed zoning change. So ultimately, the planning board develops a, um, a proposed amendment to our zoning bylaws, and that ultimately gets voted on at a town meeting and has to be approved by the voters before it can be enacted. Um, Sue Brown has been um, uh, successful in securing some funding from the state uh, to provide technical assistance uh, to the planning, planning board and to the committee that will get underway on this effort. Um, so that's a big help. And um, uh, that will be getting underway very, very soon. So this effort will be getting underway this summer and going through the fall and into the winter. And if things progress well, then there could well be a vote at uh, next year's annual town meeting for a potential um, zoning amendment that would adopt this overlay district concept. Um, so Eli, as you said, uh, tonight really was just to make sure that the, that the board of selectmen were, were up to speed on what the planning board is doing and that um, being a, uh, an important project, it will be helpful to have as, uh, as many people at the table as possible and, and engaged and sharing information. Um, it makes sense probably to have regular updates from the planning board uh, as this gets underway. And so that would be um, something that we'll want to, to schedule uh, at future meetings. Um, as, as well as uh, really, and we talked about this and we need to um, uh, move forward, we obviously have been somewhat hampered with, with COVID in terms of some of our meeting presentations, but um, we have talked about having regular updates um, between the board of select and the, and the planning board. And so this, um, this can be a good impetus to be doing that on a regular basis as well. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the quick overview of it. And it'll be something that'll be um, uh, out in the public realm and, and different ideas and different discussions and different uh, proposals will be presented and people will uh, have a good chance to, to engage and provide input as the process unfolds. All right, so questions and comments from the board? What is the um, the amount that that um, or the money that Sue has secured already? What is that? Um, is that dog-eared for something specific? So I'm, uh, I should have refreshed my memory on that number. I, I want to say it's in the twenty-five thousand dollar range um, for technical support, and that that is 
specifically um, uh, for the 40R process and help us uh, analyzing the, the area that we're talking about, identify its, its constraints and its opportunities in terms of natural resources and, and protections that are needed, um, run through different scenarios, different density scenarios, and present, help us present different, um, uh, different ways of, of approaching flexible uh, mixed uses, both housing and commercial. Um, so I think there's a desire certainly was expressed through the master plan that we loosen up some of the restrictions that we currently have in the LCD to allow some um, additional uses up there. But there's obviously a large concern uh, that will remain to make sure that whatever is developed up there is um, very mindful and protective of the natural resources um, in the area. Um, certainly uh, uh, being within the watershed is, is, is front and center on that. Um, so drainage and runoff and, and managing that would be very important, uh, putting into place strong performance standards. So the technical assistance will, will be from um, uh, planning experts from NATC and from the state to help us with those, those various aspects. And um, wow, that, that 25,000 is going to go a long way. <laughs> yeah, so we are, uh, I believe Sue has a second application in for uh, some, some additional funding as well yep. to, uh, to help with that. Thank you. Um, I've, I've sort of been sitting in on planning board m meetings when they don't conflict with um, our meetings, and I'm happy to continue um, and even step it up a little bit if that would be helpful for the Board of Selectmen. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't complain, especially since you have sat on the planning board before. Um, I, I think that would be uh, valuable. Um, and to that end, I would love to get, if there's any um, any planning board sort of um, education or whatever that might happen, I'd love to sit in on some of that for a, a refresher if that's possible. No, no absolutely. You can, you can arrange that. Thank you. Jeff, are you uh, good with us? I'm, I'm fine with it. I was going to volunteer, but I think Becky's background is, is uh, a strength that um, I have yet to develop. You're getting <laughs> questions that need to be asked, though, Jeff. So I'm, you know, happy to share if you'd like. Well, as this progresses, coming up. Yes, <laughs> there's plenty to do, and as this yeah. progresses, uh, all of all of all of you will want to be engaged and informed. So yeah, it's it's really just having perhaps Becky as as the lead, and then bringing everyone else along as 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 things progress. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. That that's uh, simple enough, uh, and I, I uh, so Muffin and Arthur, forgive me for you know not asking you, but you know, <laughs> bye. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and actually, I I won't ask you on uh, the next. Uh, well, not the next item. There's another item coming up. Uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> So any other questions or comments on the, the 40R before we move on? All right, that's easy enough. One little step at a time. Okay, item number five on the agenda is to review and approve a 112th budget submittal. Now, um, for those of you who might be taking a deep breath and going, what in the world are they talking about? So um, the school district had to go through this too. Because of the late date of the annual town meeting, um, uh, they want, just to be safe, to have a backup plan. And by they, I mean the state. Uh, 
uh, stating what the plan is in case we um, manage to screw up and not have a budget in place by July 1st. So to do that, um, we need to approve um, a 1 12th budget submittal in advance just in case. We don't anticipate having to need, need it. It would be bad if we needed it, but we plan for uh, everything because that's what we have to do. Uh, Greg, did I get, get that roughly right? You, you got that exactly right. Um, it, it's pretty formulaic in terms of what we are presenting. Um, you, you take the year's budget, you divide it into 12, but then you make some adjustments for um, uh, different payments that happen in, at different, in different months. July happens to be a heavy month um, because we, we typically take advantage of some discounts by paying up front. Um, our pension liability, um, some of our uh, property and, and liability insurances, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so the one twelfth isn't exactly one twelfth every month um, because of those variations. Uh, bond payments, for example, come due in, in a particular month, so that month will be heavy. Um, but nonetheless, it's it's rather formulaic. Um, it's taking our existing budget and basically repeating it for this coming year as a, as a fallback measure. All right, questions from board members, comments? So this budget is completely level from 20 to 21. Yes, it is. Yep. Right. Thank you. All right, and no other questions? All right, I'll take a motion to approve the 112th budget submittal in our packet. So moved. I'll move. So I heard Jeff uh, moving and Muffin seconding. Sound right? Yep. Yep. Roll call vote, Ms. Driscoll. Yes. Mr. Steiner. Yes. Mr. Bob McTurner. Yes. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. Item number six, uh, Selectman representation to the Open Space and Recreation Plan Update Committee and interviewing an at-large candidate for um, also for the Open Space uh, and Recreation Committee. Now let me touch on that first. So I, Curt that's Curtis Rising, and I am not sure if he is here. I hope that he's here. Now, uh, Curtis, if you are there and can hear me, um, uh, I can't see your name as somebody who's uh, signed in using the application. You might be dialed in by phone. You're certainly muted right now. If you are actually using the application, could you please press the ask a question button? And if you are not, if you are on the phone, could you please press star six now and get into the queue so that I can unmute you? All right, so it looks like we don't have Mr. Rising handy. Uh, so he had wanted to be assigned a position uh, on the uh, Open Space and Recreation Committee. Uh, and ideally, we want to interview people who are um, uh, showing up. In this particular case, he has um, served on the Conservation Commission before. I will leave it up to the board to tell me if they want him to actually come in for an interview before we appoint him. Uh, I am, um, well, no, I'm going to go through the board. Board's opinions, do you want him to come in for an inter interview before we appoint him? I, I would certainly want him to come in for an interview, um, if only not to set a precedent of having people um, put in an application and not be available for an interview. Yeah. Becky? I, I would agree with Jeff. Yeah. Um, Muffin and Arthur, you got any comments? Yeah, I, I think it's, I, I agree. You don't want to set a precedent to just be appointing people without having an opportunity to, in some form, see them. Yeah, I don't want a midnight appointment with someone I don't even know. 
Yeah, I, th I think Curtis just joined the meeting. Oh, good. Oh, there he is. All right, we can actually talk to him. Good. I was going to have to apologize for not uh, uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's to get him in play. Uh, Curtis Rising, you are not muted now. Can can you hear us? And can you? We hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? We can. Excellent. All right. So you filed an application to join the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Um, and uh, uh, if you don't mind, if you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you want to join the committee, uh, give the board an opportunity to ask you some questions. Sure. Um, so I, I initially lived in Manchester 1973 to 1971. Uh, my wife and I moved uh, to our home on Friend Street in 2003. And I previously served um, an individual is only able to do two of three years on the CONCOM. So I, I did a one-year um, stint on the CONCOM. And then based on work and life, I, I did not uh, feel I could do justice to the role uh, for a, a next term. Uh, but I very much enjoyed the work. Uh, so I, one, one aspect is I'm a, a person that believes strongly in nature and environmentalism. I'm a a strong outdoor <laughs> participant in terms of being a trail runner and a mountain runner. And uh, I have a strong commitment to this town. So I, I think it, it seems like it would be a great fit and I, I would very much enjoy uh, serving on that com committee. All right, board members, um, now's your, your chance for the interview. Um, Ms. Driscoll. Um, Curtis, so one of the typical questions I ask, and it seems a little strange now because of the remote world we're in, but just your just your availability of time to be able to participate fully. Yeah. Um, well, I, what I would say is that um, I'm a I am a busy uh, busy busy person with a full time uh, corporate job. Um, I think that there is admittedly some more flexibility in terms of being remote. Um, and I would also say that, you know, our kids are now teenagers. So I think uh, in terms of life and work, I've, I've got more availability than I did previously. But I think the commitment based on what I've heard in terms of that particular committee uh, would match my kind of availability. And I, I feel that the commitment would be full. So perfect. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Steiner. Sorry, I was on mute there. Uh, hi, Curtis. How are you? Um, Good. I um, was just curious if, if there's anything that you see as uh, kind of immediate opportunities that you would uh, identify um, in, in such a role. Yeah, well, I think the, you know, um, I actually was just... Um, uh, observing and attended the meeting just the last hour. Um, and I think obviously kind of the powder house work that's been ongoing, um, I think is a tremendous uh, addition for our town. I would certainly like to help them kind of finish that project in full. Um, I know there is work done at, at Dexter's Pond. I think that, you know, to be honest with you, uh, you know, my, I'm, I'm absolutely still coming up to speed on kind of the focus. But I think taking the open space plan and ensuring uh, that it's, it's full, it's updated, and that the specific projects that are priorities on that are, are fully implemented would be um, kind of the reason I would join. I'm, I'm as, as I said before, very, very passionate about open space as well as kind of thinking through what would be best for town uh, citizens and what, what available options we have. So I think that's a pretty open answer, but that's where I'm at. Great. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bob McTurner. Uh, Muffin actually asked the question that I had for you, Curtis, which was, you know, what has basically what had changed in terms of your availability um, since uh, 2015. And uh, it's surprising to hear you say, you know, my kids are teenagers, so I have more time. Um, <laughs> that wasn't my experience whatsoever. <laughs> But, um, I, you know, we'll, we'll go with it. I, I, I think that uh, I like your enthusiasm about this, and I know that there's uh, 
there's going to be a lot to do to get this uh, update done. So. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's a great question. I think um, certainly I'm being honest, the Conservation Commission was a tremendous commitment um, in terms of, you know, call it hours and, and kind of visits, et cetera. I think that, you know, based on my understanding of this role, it's something I could fulfill. Um, and I think, you know, it's also, as I said, something that's really matching where I'm at. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's uh, my response to those, those two very important questions. So. Thank you. Ms. Jakes. Nope. My questions have been asked, been asked and answered, but thank you. And thank you for um, tossing your name in the hat. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So um, and from my standpoint, you actually uh, managed to open up, uh, answer up my questions in your opening remarks uh, already. And uh, I remember you from um, uh, the Conservation Commission time period. And also, uh, I'm aware that you're a, a strong conservationist uh, uh, from the, the time that we uh, spent a few years back when the board stubs its toe on uh, Powder House. Uh, I won't go into the details on that painful memory. Um, <coughs> in any case, uh, I, I know you'll do a, a great job on the Open Space Committee. And uh, thank you for uh, coming back and ag again to volunteer for the town. Great. Yeah, it would be an honor to help out. So I appreciate it. All right. Uh, so can I get a motion to appoint um, uh, Mr. Rising to the Open Space and Recreation Committee? Um, uh, Greg, what's the term of that appointment? Well, it's, just, it's for the committee itself. So the committee will be working until it's finished, which should be, um, you know, within, really it should be within a year. Uh, but, but it is an open-ended term until the work of the committee is done. Yeah. All right. Can I get a, um, sec um, a, a motion to appoint uh, Mr. Risen to the Open Space and Recreation Plan Update Committee? So moved. So I heard uh, Muffin in there as well. So I'm going to call it back. He was uh, moving and Muffin was seconding. Any discussion? All in favor, roll we'll call vote. Ms. Driscoll? Yeah. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mr. Bodmer Turner? Yes. Ms. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. Welcome back to the fray, yeah. Mr. Rising. Thank and you, Curtis. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Curtis. All right. Uh, so that brings us actually back to the selectman representation to the Open Space and Recreation <coughs> Plan Update Committee, the Steering Committee. Uh, so this is something that they're going to start meetings on a little bit later on this month. And so we wanted to get somebody uh, from the board now um, appointed to this spot. Uh, <coughs> I'm good. You're good? Yep. I mean, you just volunteered, right? I just volunteered. That's right. <laughs> See, this is what I meant. See, I, I watched Muffin and Arthur take out. a step back, and Becky's already <laughs> taken a step forward. So there's not a lot of room here, Eli. Yeah. <laughs> no, there really wasn't. <laughs> Didn't leave you with much of an option, did I? <laughs> I think I think Becky chewed off the bigger the bigger bite. So. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, Muffin and Arthur again. Uh, no offense, but uh, see you. Not taken. Yep. Not taken. Uh, okay. Um, what do we need to do to offend you? <laughs> <laughs> Takes a bit. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So. Uh, I suppose they actually would prefer a vote on that one, so I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve um, uh, Mr. Bob Turner as the um, representative, the Board of Selectmen's representative of the Open Space and Recreation uh, Plan Update Committee. Uh, can I get a second on that? Second. Second. Uh, roll. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Driscoll? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mr. Bob Turner? Mr. 
Yeah, Mr. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm so sorry. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Bowling says yes. Okay. Uh, consent agenda we already covered. Uh, correspondence. <coughs> So, correspondence, we have letters from Infinity uh, regarding package information, more stuff they're not going to offer anymore. Um, letter from the Arbor Day F uh, Foundation, uh, recognition for Manchester as a, a 2019 Tree City of USA um, award. Uh, and then the last one is actually uh, worth noting. Most of these are not, but this one is, I think. This is a letter from the commissioner of the Massachusetts um, uh, is regarding the telecommunications and cable public hearing that's coming up in August. And this is a rate setting hearing, and they are um, looking to see if uh, municipalities want to not only have members but have anybody who has a particular axe to grind um, on this um, uh, in, the, in these hearings. There will be some public hearings and there's a, a fairly formal process for providing input to them. And I don't know if the board has an interest in finding a particular person from Manchester to participate in those public hearings. I think we probably do. So, uh, comments or questions from the board? I think it would be a good idea if we could find someone who would like to do that. So, Greg, we did have, um, uh, we had a couple of board members, or rather residents, who were involved in the rene renegotiation of the uh, Comcast contract not that long ago, right? Um, yes, yeah, so they um, uh, were people who have been involved with, um, with the studio, 1623 studio. Hmm. And then there were some folks who, um, you know, had expressed uh, frustrations, concerns with, with Comcast, certainly uh, over the years. Um, we, we do get occasional um, concerns, um, and, and um, we could try to reach out to some of those folks, or again, put it out there to the general public um, to, to see if there's a volunteer here. Uh. <coughs> Thoughts from the board? I think that's a good idea because there could be someone out there that's got some experience and background and knowledge too. And we have a couple of months yet before. Yep. We do. So uh, there, there's uh, the deadline for interveners is um, uh, 5 p.m. on Wednesday, August 5th. Plenty of time on that one. They want an earlier response, I believe, on the um, uh, any representation from the municipality. But uh, yeah, there's plenty of time. So I think you're putting it out um, uh, to the public for any uh, comments is a, is a good idea. And uh, uh, aim to get this sorted out uh, in uh, early July, mid-July. So, Greg, I guess I can work with you on that. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll pull Tiffany in and do a little publicity on it as well. Okay. All right. Uh, that's the end of correspondence, and now we will move to town administrator support. All right, thank you. Um, so again, starting off with construction updates. Um, water work on Raymond continues along pretty well. We're getting close to finishing all the, um, the new connections uh, to the new pipe, uh, so that's, that continues to go pretty smoothly. Um, 
Tackenrack has uh, been working with Little League and doing some field repairs to Sweeney during this downtime, so took advantage of um, what was a hard season, <laughs> a non-existent season, but that has enabled um, some upgrades to the infield and replanting of grass and making the dugouts better and, and all that good things. So that's gone well. Um, also, uh, voters approved uh, funding for uh, better security at Singing Beach, and those are um, uh, being installed and uh, about ready to be operational. Uh, so that's that's good progress there as well. Um, uh, just a quick aside, uh, um, the, the phase three that started up uh, uh, last Thursday, so far so good. Um, so staff has been able to handle that well, and uh, people are, uh, for the most part, uh, obeying the rules and, and, and cooperating. So that's much appreciated, and hopefully we can keep keep that going. Um, so one other item on the uh, on the, my comments, a couple of other ones. Um, one is to um, you know how, discuss how we handle our swearing in for our new fire chief. So obviously we're under unusual circumstances. Normally we would have a nice ceremony for that and reception. Um, you know, I, I thought about uh, doing something at the annual town meeting, but you know, Alan's working so hard to uh, to make that as as uh, a swift of meeting as possible that I guess I'm reluctant to uh, to suggest that we try something there. Uh, certainly could have him stand up and wave his hand, but maybe nothing more than that. Um, Jason's willing to to attend um, if, if that's if that's something you would like to see. But we should think a little bit then about what we might be able to do uh, early, early January, uh, January, early July, uh, <laughs> to uh, to welcome welcome him, swear him in, and uh, mm -hmm. get get him off to an official start. So I don't know if people have thoughts or, or comments on that. Where would you do it outdoors? So would you do it like in front of the fire station, or that, that's what I was thinking. Uh -huh. You know, do a little. You know, again, hope for a good day and, and do something similar to what we do with the uh, 9-11 um, remembrance. Uh, we could do something like that. Um, we can pull out the, the, the engines and, and use the inside of the, of the, of the station in the bays if, if it was inclement weather. Um, you know, that provides a fair amount of space that I think you could probably do it. Yeah, I think some creativity, and we can it can get done. I I would really like to see that happen. Yeah. Yep. So the timing, he start, you know, start, July one is his first official day. Um, so uh, and then we have the, the the holiday weekend. Though it's going to be a different holiday weekend this year. Um, July fourth is a Saturday. Um, would you like to try to do it the first or second? Um, what, what do you think? Yes. Yes. Okay. July 2nd. So that's and, uh, Thursday. July 2nd is Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I think that's less likely to interfere with anybody who wanted to attend or was planning on traveling that weekend. Um, and I'd hate to do it on his first day. Sure. <laughs> Give him well, a chance. Come back the second day. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> what time are we thinking? 10 a.m.? Mm -hmm. Could do a could do a mid morning. Could I mean I think whatever people's preferences. Mm. Well, it might be important to check in with Jason too. Yes. With you know if he's going to have family join in. Sure, we could. We could I'll, I'll check with him. I, I think he's actually listening in on the on the call right now. So. I do too. <laughs> so we can uh, we can certainly check in with him. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so that's great. Thank you. That's helpful feedback. We will uh, work with Jason and, and others on pulling that together. 
Um, a couple of other uh, items, uh, not to go into detail, but we, we should set up um, an executive session soon um, to talk further about union negotiations and also some contract uh, contract negotiations, not, not union, but another contract negotiation um, related, related to the compost project. Uh, so I don't know if people have the time later this week or you want to aim for, well, next Monday's town meeting, so maybe oh, not yeah. then. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if people have time uh, Thursday end of the day or, or Friday morning. I think we, I should, think we should get as much out of Becky and uh, Arthur as we can. Yeah. <laughs> Muffin. Muffin and Arthur. Excuse me. Muffin. Sorry, Becky. Unless you don't think you've gotten Muffin. enough out of us by now. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll stretch, stretch things as much as we can. We like you. You're squeezing the toothpaste, um, Muffin. Too squeezing the toothpaste. And, and this, this is okay I because... Either, I can do either Thursday or Friday. I can do Thursday, but I have um, a 7.30 uh, obligation, and then I can PM? do that also. You have a 7.30 p.m. obligation? Yes. Okay. Uh, I can do either of those days at pretty much any time. Um, Friday's a little bit better for me. I... Um, you have an appointment in Concord at 10.30 on Thursday. Arthur. Uh, I think I'm pretty flexible. I just have to double check here. What time are we starting, sorry? Uh, we didn't say. Uh, yeah. uh, Becky has a constraint. She has something at 7.30 on Thursday, so we don't want to roll past 7.30 on Thursday. Sarah, Sarah, yeah. Yeah. Seven thirty in the evening, Becky. Yeah. Or doing the evening, not the morning. Okay. Um, we, we can do. Or we could do. Or we could do Friday morning. Or we could do first thing Thursday morning. I can do any of that. I just need I to be on the road by nine thirty. Friday morning might be better for me, but I don't want to dictate anything. That Friday morning's good for me too. Yep, I'm good with that. What time? Eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Greg, you got a preference? Oh uh, no, um, either one of those is fine. Eight o'clock Friday morning. Sounds good. Sure. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So the last thing um, um, wanted to mention how, how is that. Think, sorry, how long do you think we're going? Mm. Uh, let's say that's it's a good hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe an hour and a half. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yep. So one one last thing um, is that Parks and Rec uh, been working on. Um, we're moving forward with the Masco summer concerts, concerts in the park at Masco on Tuesday Tuesday evenings, and would like to uh, proceed obviously with um, some modifications. Yes, everything is modified these days. Um, mimic the the spacing requirements that uh, are you know, good for beaches, so the 12 foot spacing between uh, you know the, the family gatherings, the towel spaces or blanket space or chair space. Um, would not make food available. People would uh, have to bring their own and not have the face painting for the kids and that sort of thing to, to minimize lining up and getting close to each other. Um, but the uh, Park and Rec Committee certainly would like to proceed with these. Uh, be a nice way to still salvage some of our summer traditions and feel that um, uh, that we can certainly keep, keep people uh, appropriately spaced and still enjoy some, some outdoor music. So if, if you're okay with that, they'd like to proceed um, starting July 7th and going through August 11th and then on August 18th um, plans are coming together for a concert sponsored by the 375th committee. So get one of their events in as well. 
Thanks. I think it's I think it's a fabulous idea. People love the concerts in the park anyway, yep. and and I think in whatever form they can be presented in, people will be thrilled. I agree. Yeah. So I, I, I tend to agree as well. There, there was a comment uh, that um, maybe we could uh, pretend, consider putting a grid on the um, field or failing that. I mean, I, I know it's at least some other location, uh, some other place, uh, put simple circles on the ground on the, on the, to establish the grid. And I actually think that might be a really good idea because <coughs> then Parks and Rec knows where they're going to set up the con uh, concerts and they can establish the, the grid so that it actually would provide people with a um, reasonable vantage point. Then you w wouldn't run into cases where people plop themselves down and then suddenly go, oh, wait, and this isn't quite the right place. And then the, mm -hmm. the whole arrangement gets a little skewed or there's uh, uh, a some... It, I just think it would make it so much easier and smoother if we did do that. Uh, I know some people probably feel otherwise, but uh, I was wondering what other people on the board thought. So I think it's a great idea. It just takes the guesswork away from people. It takes the pressure off of people. Exactly. And quite frankly, there's several other uh, communities that I've seen, you know, postings on or whatever that are doing it, you know, having their outdoor events, and that's what they're doing is marking up the spaces. So. Yeah. It's it, you know it's our new way of it's our new way of adjusting and and uh, being creative and and um, helping people be outdoors. So I I would think it would be welcome. I agree, and I also feel as Muffin said that by by taking the guesswork out of it, it doesn't. I think it it, it also removes potential tensions. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. So, Greg, are you all right with an informal approval, or do you want to vote? Oh, I think an informal is fine. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? That's all for me. Thank you. All right. Uh, other matters as may not have been reasonably anticipated by the chair. I don't have anybody. Does anybody else have any? I don't. So um, this is, I think, uh, the shortest meeting that we've had since the uh, <laughs> advent of our uh, interesting new times. Um, uh, Muffin uh, and Arthur, I'm so sorry that for your last meeting, we didn't have a marathon session that had us all tearing our hair out four hours or four and a half hours in. Um, I I promise I'll, I'll try to find some way to make your lives miserable before you actually leave. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, congratulations on your last uh, uh, regularly scheduled um, meeting. Uh, any other uh, comments or questions before I take a motion to adjourn? So moved. Got a second? Oh, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor, please just say aye. I think we should discuss this. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Greg. See you folks later. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening in. Thank you. Thank you, Eli.